Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, uh, and in today's video, we are not installing a truck part. Rather, what I wanted to do is kind of give you guys a walkthrough of my stereo in my 2020 Ram Rebel. I see this topic come up quite a bit on the forums and the Facebook groups and whatnot, so I figured I'd give my two cents as to how I upgraded the stereo in my truck. Uh, so hopefully it gives you some inspiration for your truck. So as far as baseline, what are we talking about? Or I guess, what were we working with within my Rebel itself? So my 2020 Ram Rebel came with the eight inch stereo. So you can see right there, eight inch uh, in dash radio. And then it had the base six speaker package. So basically what that means is I had two dash speakers. I had two door speakers and then two rear speakers in the back doors. That is all I have. I don't have an amp and I don't have a factory subwoofer. So there's also the Alpine system, which is a step above the base six system. And then there's a step above the Alpine system, which is the Harman Kardon, where you get God knows how many speakers in the car. But ideally, I guess, theoretically, each of those packages provides a little bit better of a sound package. Um, typically, when I buy a truck, I've modified pretty much every stereo in every truck or car I've owned. So when I am purchasing a new truck, I really don't go after the premium sound package because I know I'm going to end up tearing into it anyway. And it's a heck of a lot easier to tear into the base system than it is to tear into a system that uses a factory amp. So let's dive into it. Basically, what I want to do is walk you through the steps that I went through on my upgrade. I'll start with the first few steps and then we'll work our way into the more complicated when I got to the wiring and my subwoofer box build because I know I get a lot of questions on the subwoofer box and I want to give you guys a better angle, a better view of it. So the first part of my speaker or my stereo upgrade started with the dash speakers. So I decided early on that if I'm going to do all the speakers, I'm going to get all the same brand and um, that's kind of the route I'm going to go. So what I ended up doing is replacing the dash speakers with the Infinity Reference uh, REF3032 CFX speakers. So I bought these from Crutchfield. They come with the harness to adapt them into the factory wiring so there's no cutting. All you do is pull out, let's see, you pop open this little grill here, you pull out the factory speaker, unplug it, you plug in the harness that you get with your speaker from in, uh, with the Infinity speaker, and then you tap, or then you plug in your Infinity one, reattach it, close the grill, you're done. This is a pretty common upgrade. You're gonna see a lot of guys doing this in their Rebels and their Rams in general. Uh, one of the common complaints after doing this upgrade or really moving to any sort of new tweeter is how tinny the sound ha uh, sounds after you do this. So basically, um, these speakers are wired in series with your door speakers. So what happens sometimes is these end up, if you go to an aftermarket tweeter and you leave the factory speaker in there, that dash speaker, ends up um, the perception is that it's really loud and really loud from a treble standpoint so what it's doing is overpowering your door speaker so it almost sounds kind of tinny um, again that's what some people complain about I thought it was a, an excellent upgrade um, would I have just done these tweeters and not done anything else in the truck no I, I kind of knew where I was going with the speaker on day one so it wasn't just uh, hey I'll install this and see how that goes and then I'll install a new part if uh, if I'm not happy then. I knew ultimately where I wanted to go with the stereo and I highly suggest you kind of look long term with your stereo before you start upgrading speakers. You could certainly upgrade them piecemeal like this but again one of the common issues with upgrading the, just the tweeters here and leaving factory speakers in the door was that these tweeters end up overpowering your door speakers and then you get a whole lot of trouble and not a lot of bass. I then purchased front and rear door speakers. So again I went with Infinity Reference so this is where it gets kind of uh, goofy here. So these are the REF5032 CFX. So I use the five and a quarter speakers for the front doors and then the six and a half for the rear doors. So why did I end up with goofy sizes? Uh, Crutchfield scratch and dent. So that's how I save money when I'm purchasing stereo stuff. I've used the Crutchfield scratch and dent system or scratch and dent program quite a bit. And I've never been upset with the quality that I get. And usually it's just an open box, if not, the speaker's been used gently. Oh, as so, far as speakers, those tweeter speakers cost me about $72. I think I had to buy those brand new. Then the front door and rear door speakers ended up total costing 155. Okay, so after I upgraded the tweeter as well as the front and rear door speakers, the first thing I noticed was bass basically dropped out on the system. So I suspect it's because I went with smaller speakers instead of a six by nine, which handles bass relatively well. I had a five and a quarter in the front door and a six and a half in the rear door. I suspect because I have smaller speakers, 
the system wasn't capable of producing enough bass in and of itself to power those speakers or at least to drive those speakers um, on the low end. So the high end was awesome. I really like clear music and this speaker upgrade did that. However, bass dropped out. Now, I wasn't concerned about that because I knew where I was going at the end of the day. However, if your plan is to just upgrade speakers and leave it at that, I would highly recommend you look into the larger 6x9 speakers. In my own personal opinion, again, all of this stuff is just my opinion. There's no right or wrong answer here. But the 6x9s handle bass much better. So if you're not planning on adding an additional subwoofer or a new subwoofer, go with 6x9s over the 6.5 and 5.25s. And and or at least do your research and talk to Crutchfield if you can. So after I upgraded the front door speakers and really didn't install those, it was super easy. You pop out the clip here, you pop out a second clip down here, unscrew those, and then you just basically slowly worked the way around the door. And I didn't even have to pull the whole door off. I just popped open the bottom and I worked at it from below. Now you also needed brackets in order to fit the five and a quarter in there because the factory speakers are six by nines. So Another benefit of ordering from Crutchfield is you not only get those wiring harnesses to adapt these to the factory wiring so you don't got to clip into it, but you also get the brackets to fit those speakers into the opening. So same thing goes for the rear here. Um, here's my six and a half inch speakers that uh, were installed in the rear. These again, infinity references. Oops, part of the scratch and dent sticker. Same thing undo the panel here, undo the panel underneath the, the little grip here, and then just pop open the bottom of the door panel and then you get access to that speaker. Okay, so after I did the speaker upgrade, I saved up a little bit more and then came time for integrating in a aftermarket amp. So what we're looking at here is the PDR V75. So this is a five channel amp from Alpine. I've had this in my previous truck, so my GMC, and then I just basically pulled it out of there and my plan was to use it in this truck. This is an awesome amp, it's a solid stain amp. It's super small, so it's really easy to fit wherever you want. Um, and I've had excellent luck with this, so I figured, you know, why replace something that already works? So repurpose the PDR for my uh, Ram Rebel. So as far as integrating this, you can't just throw this in there and expect to integrate it, especially from a five channel standpoint. I suppose if you were using a uh, using this to just power a subwoofer, you could tap off of your rear speakers uh, down here, pull the signal into the amp. However, I needed RCA inputs, so that's where, let's see here, my audio control LC7i comes in. Now, I typically call this a processor, but I've been corrected on the forums a few times that this is actually a line output converter. So, so it, this is converting my speaker level inputs into RCA uh, outputs for my amp. So I'm taking all four channels, the left and right in the front and the left and right in the rear. <clears throat> Remember, even though you have six speakers, it's really only four channels since those front speakers are tied in series with the uh, door speakers. So I take those four channels, I dump them into the LC7i. I could tune the volumes a little bit and I had to do that just a little bit just to kind of crank down the rear so it wasn't overpowering the front. Then the LC7 gives me my RCA outputs. I take those RCA outputs, I bring them underneath this little, my little storage bin thing here, and that's where I tap into the back of my PDR-V75. So from here, I then take my speaker level outputs, so this is the now amplified signal, and then I drive that underneath the carpet over to the ANC system, and we'll get into that in a second. As far as power, everything's run through this little sill here. Uh, as, and then as far as the speaker wires, the speaker wires run underneath the carpet alongside that little storage bin and then they pop up right underneath the front driver's seat. And like I said, we'll dive into that little harness there in a second because that is where the magic happens. So um, a couple notes on this stuff. The audio control LC7i has GTO sensing and basically what that means is if the LC7 sees a signal from the door speakers it will turn on the LC7 and then there's an output on there where you can use it to trigger any other accessories. So when I initially installed that guy, I was using the speaker level sensing to turn on my amp as well. What I noticed is the LC7 kept turning on even when the truck was off and the doors weren't even open. So something, and I think related to the ANC system, is constantly sending signals to your factory speakers and what that was causing the LC7 to do is uh, false turn-ons. So basically it was going on and off, on and off, on and off. 
Um, I called Alpine and I asked them if that was going to be an issue with the amp. They said it shouldn't be an issue, but I just didn't feel comfortable with the amp turning on and off that much. So I went old school. So what I ended up doing is running a separate trigger wire from a fuse box, and I'll get to that fuse position in a second, to turn on my LC7. And then the LC7, like I said, gives you that output. Take that and then use that as your speaker turn on for your amp. So we got our dash speakers, we got our front door, rear door, we have a five channel amp installed and it's integrated into the factory sound system with the audio control system. So uh, just a quick look, here's the box for the LC7. Again, this is another part that I repurposed. I actually had this in two trucks ago. So this is from my F-150 that I used to have. This thing works perfect. Um, audio control is an awesome company and their customer service is second to none. Then we have our PDR V75. So you can see it has a cover on it. I don't have the cover on. I'm constantly tinkering with the sound system just because I can't leave all enough alone. So um, the case or the cover is still in there. It looks nice, but since it's underneath my seat, you don't really see it. So this is giving me 75 watts per channel. And then for my subwoofer, it's giving me 250 watts. All right. So how did I integrate the LC7i into the factory system without cutting any factory wires? Because we haven't cut any wires yet. Everything has been wires that I added on here. The magic is the ANC CH01 harness. So essentially what this harness does is it plugs into your ANC system underneath your front driver's seat and it gives you the speaker level access points so you could tap into that wire harness instead of cutting into your factory system. So you can see all the wiring down there. Let's take a look at the wiring diagram and I'll walk you through kind of what I did here. So this is what the wiring, the wire diagram or what the wire harness looks like. So basically you unplug all the harnesses going into your factory ANC system and then you just plug it into this and then this system plugs into your ANC module. And what this gives you then is access to speaker wires from an external device. So instead of having to tap into the factory wires, it now gives you wires that you could tap into so then you can run your signal to the LC7i. So this is the instruction manual that comes with the ANC, uh, the CHO1. So right here they have a red line. That red line indicates where you can cut in order to take or steal the speaker wire signals. So after plugging everything in, I cut the wires here and then I butt connected uh, wire lengths to attach to the uh, line output converter. So I tapped in here. These signals went back to my line output converter, which then went to my amp. And then on the back end, when, when it's coming out of the amp, I tied back into the other side. So if you plug this in all by itself and not do anything as far as amp or uh, processor, this is going to bypass the ANC system, which I've heard people say that when you add a subwoofer, the ANC system goes haywire, so that's why this harness was made. It was made to bypass it. But what this harness also allows you to do is cut into this wiring harness instead of use, cutting into your factory harnesses. So if you were to just add a amplifier that has speaker level inputs and you want to run a two, um, just an amp for a subwoofer, you could just steal the rear signal. So it'd be the green wires and the purple wires. Uh, in my application, I'm adding a five channel amp, so I wanted to amplify all of the speakers, so all six speakers, plus I wanted to give myself the capability to add a subwoofer. So I grabbed every signal from every wire coming out of this harness, I ran it to the LOC, that wire then cuts over here with RCAs, goes into my amp, and then from my amp, it goes right back up there. So I had full intention of wrapping everything in wire loom, however, you never see those wires. So I have the seat pulled completely far up. Um, but again, you don't see those wires at all, so I just left them, I think, mostly because I'm lazy. I did find time to wire loom all this stuff back here, uh, but with the exception of the stuff underneath the front seat, uh, no, no time. Just kind of laziness on my part. So again, this was <clears throat> the magic piece to the whole stereo system. This is how you integrate aftermarket accessories like an align output converter and an amp into the factory system without cutting any factory wires. So let's go ahead and move that seat down and I'll show you where I tapped into the fuse box to power this guy, which ultimately turns on my amp down here. So give me one second. So I have the lower panel below the steering wheel removed. And what this does is gives you access to the interior fuse box. So you can see I added an add a fuse. So that's a micro add a fuse. 
and that's in fuse position F65. So F65, let's grab this guy. F65 is your run accessory feed. It's a 10 amp fuse, so it's perfect for tying in and powering your uh, processor, line output converter, or amp, or what have you. Now, if you're also adding like a dash cam, you can also use that too. Just make sure you're not overloading the amperage because the second you overload that, your BCM is probably either going to go into safety mode or um, you're going to cook your BCM. So again, this just pops down. There's two seven millimeter screws on each side, and then there's three clips on each side, and it easily pops out. You got to use a little bit of force, but otherwise, pretty simple. So that signal wire then comes across underneath the dash and then cuts underneath the sill, runs through there. Let's go in the back. A little dark in here, but it keeps running up here, and then everything passes through behind the rear seat. So I removed this little section since it's the smaller. It's the smaller of the rear seats. I just removed that just to make running the wires super easy. But that wire then cuts up the back, goes into my L, uh, LC7i, and then ties into my amp. All right, so now we're underneath the hood of the truck and we needed to get power from the battery all the way to the amplifier and the LC7i. So what I installed is a, I think it's Skosh, dual output battery terminal uh, with two uh, of the maxi fuses. Let's see here. So it's got two channels in there. When I installed the stereo upgrade, I knew I was going to be adding aftermarket lighting and using my trigger to power that lighting. So I wanted to make sure I had two outputs and two fusible outputs on here. So I have a power running into the front side of the terminal, and then I got four gauge running out the back. So as far as my wiring for anything stereo wise, this is all from a company called New Concepts. I've used their wiring on my last truck as well as on my dad's boat. Uh, works out awesome. It's super quality wire. It's really easy to pull because of the coating on it and it makes life a lot easier when you're pulling kind of quality wires through the truck instead of the cheap chintzy ones. So we got the battery cable here. This is powering the amp and then it cuts down through here. So down, way down there, there is, oh, I'm sorry, there's a rubber grommet here and if you have the base six system like I did, there's actually a nipple up on top, and if you cut that nipple, it gives you a perfect running point to run the wire from the engine bay through the firewall underneath the dash on the driver's side. So you're gonna need a hanger and then some dish soap just to kind of speed up and make sure everything kind of slides through nicely. But there is a nipple on top of that rubber grommet right there that I used. Oh, I'm sorry, it's on the bottom. So you can kind of see it down there. So there's a nipple on the bottom of it. You just clip off the top. There's like a little round knob on the top. You cut that off and then you could run your wire through there. You need to poke a hole in there just to get everything started and then use a lot of dish soap to help it kind of slide through there. But once you get it through there, then you could pull the power into the cab. Oh, running out of light. And you pull the power into the cab underneath the dash. Then you could take your power wire, run it down to the sill. Again, you run it, you can run it alongside your trigger wire. Comes up here. These panels are all super easy to pull out. There is plenty of room in here for a four gauge wire. And then I ran it up the back, around the back seat, and then that's where, oh, it's right here, power wire drops down. And then I have another wire jumping between the amp and the LC7i to power that as well. So, quick recap. All of the speakers in the truck were upgraded to infinity reference. So the three and a halfs in the dash, the five and a quarters in the front door, six and a halfs in the back. Then I added an LC7i, which tapped into the factory ANC system using the ANC CH01 from PAC or from PAC. That then gave me my signals for my amp. Then my amp outputs went right back into the other side of this harness. I cut the harness right at the red wire use one side to feed all my accessories, use the other side to feed my accessories back into the factory system. So that gave me clear sound on the speakers um, and then amplified sound. So it gave me a heck of a lot more volume and power coming out of the speakers. So I'm not worrying about use, utilizing the factory amp inside the head unit. What that didn't give me is bass yet. So my piece de la resistance is that guy right there. This is a subwoofer box that I built customized, or I guess I custom built it for this truck. So let's take a closer look at it. I'm actually pretty proud of this one. It's not perfect, but it was a lot of fun to build and we'll talk about that in a second. 
Okay, so this is the one piece of my stereo equipment that I get a ton of questions on because I share pictures of this box a lot on the forums and everyone's asked me where I got the box. And like my response is usually I got it from my head because I created this box to fit inside the factory storage bin because A, I didn't want to mount a subwoofer to the back. I don't have a factory subwoofer there, so I can't modify that section of it. And B, I don't really use this under seat storage that much, so I was able to sacrifice this whole side to basically give my subwoofer a home. So this is the Pioneer IB Flat 10. I had this subwoofer in the last three trucks and I swear to God this is the most bulletproof subwoofer I've ever used. The benefit of this guy versus other 10 inch subwoofers is this is a low profile sub so it's really not that deep. And what that allows you to do is fit it into some pretty tight spots. So. This 10 inch subwoofer is living in a subwoofer box that my son and I built, my youngest son and I. So this is a custom made box. I use cardboard templates to basically fit to the floor and come up with this design that sits flush on the edge of the storage and takes up as much volume as I possibly could in order to get within range of the acceptable volumes for the subwoofer box. I am more than happy to share dimensions on this subwoofer box if you guys want it. Uh, just definitely shoot me a message or uh, go on my Instagram and let me know and I could give you the dimensions for this. Um, this was a lot of fun to build because my youngest son actually helped me paint it. So this took tons of hours to build. Uh, I built it out of half inch MDF. I then, uh, let's see, what did I do? I compounded it to fill in all the holes, then I primed it. Then I sprayed it with truck bed liner from like Duplicolor. I think it's the rattle can liner. It matches nicely with the, the plastic trim in here. And you don't see it that much, so some of the the little, you know, dents or whatnot, they don't show up at all. Anyway, and when it came to priming it, my son asked me if he could help. So uh, I think I shared a couple pictures on the forum and, and some of the Facebook groups. But yeah, my son helped me build this. He's really proud of it. Uh, and I am because it's a lot of fun for us to build together. So. This is my 10 inch subwoofer home and then I have a terminal on the side here. So this is super easy to pop out. It's not really attached to anything in the truck. It just sits in there by gravity or by friction. So if I wanted to, I could just pull it right out, undo the wires there, and then I free up some space over here. I've never had to remove it yet because like I said, I have a whole truck bed back there that I would just put stuff in. Uh, plus we got the bins underneath here, so it's pretty good. So anyway. This is the subwoofer box that um, I talk about quite a bit and I figured I'd give you guys more information. Uh, let me pull it out of the truck and we can get a better view of it so I can kind of give you the, the whole 360 degree review, or I guess view. Okay, so I have the subwoofer box removed from the truck. And like I said, it's not perfect. Uh, just case in point, a lot of the paint, um, it kind of fades off on the bottom here. And mostly because the, when I painted it, I was really only concerned about making sure the top looked good. The sides you don't see at all because once it's installed, um, you don't really have a visual on any of that stuff. So I sprayed it still, but um, like I said, it's not perfect. So it's basically like a wedge design because the floor in the rear of the truck has this back wedge here. So I wanted to make sure that the box hugged as much as it could there. So it basically, it's flat here, flat all the way across the bottom, wedges up the back and then comes over and like I said, I used half inch MDF on building the box. So as far as the bottom, what does that look like? Even uglier than the top. But like I said, you don't see this, so I really didn't spend too much time as far as uh, making this side look pretty. I did, I did add spacers on the subwoofer box so it sits uh, nice and flat once it's resting on the edge here. So this rests on the edge of the uh, under seat storage. This allows this little spacer here, kind of bridges this little gap here because you got the board here for the storage and I just added a half inch board there just to make sure everything's flat and it's not wobbly. And then on the rear of the box, I added another little strip. This is another little half inch piece of MDF. And what that did is that sits way back here because this portion is actually a half inch higher than the rear. So. Um, putting that spacer there allowed everything to sit nice and flush. As far as the speaker wire, there's nothing crazy about it, uh, nothing over the top. I just pulled my subwoofer output from my amp, ran it underneath this little, the, the bottom board of the storage, and then it just ties into my subwoofer. So like I said, at any point in time, I could always just remove the subwoofer and then I have all the space open. 
can't really remove that as easily it's screwed into the storage board but I mean if I need the space it's here then the LC7i that just sits there with some velcro underneath it and has it moved since I installed it okay I apologize this video had a lot of talking in it but hopefully this helps give you some ideas for your stereo upgrade or at least kind of points you in the right direction for upgrading your basic stereo in your RAM uh, so just a quick run through of everything real quick three and a half inch infinity references these went into the dash positions the five and a quarter these went into the front door and then the six and a half these went into the rear door I purchased the front and rear door speakers from the Crutchfield scratch and dent and they also came with the harnesses as well as the brackets you need to fit these into the door then as far as tying in an amp you need some sort of L, uh, line output converter so my application I use the LC7i like I said I had this laying around for my last truck so this worked perfectly fine as far as giving me the ability to take speaker level inputs so speaker level inputs on this side they go through the processing and then they come out as RCA outputs on the back end of the converter then from there I fed my PDR V75 amplifier five channel amp so this gave me the ability to dump my RCAs from the LC7i into the amp taking those signals then and then I was able to convert them back to speaker level outputs and dump those into the harness and the magic maker of the whole system here and kind of the reason why everything worked out well was this ANC CH01 harness from PAC and that is basically what I did. I ended up cutting the wires on the harness and using that to tie in all my outputs from the amp. And then the kind of the, the, the cherry on top for the whole system was that subwoofer box. Let's go check it. Okay, so it's a custom made subwoofer box that I designed kind of in my head. I use Google SketchUp. Um, like I said, I'd be more than happy to share the dimensions on this if you want to build this yourself. This works and fits perfectly inside this little box. Now I will say, I was able to make the box smaller because I had a low profile subwoofer. So you, if you have a larger subwoofer, you might need to increase the elevation. Um, I think I have about an inch and a half to two inches of play before that subwoofer touches the bottom of the seat. I did not have to lift the seat to fit any of this stuff. So everything's factory. The only cutting I had to do for the stereo system is cutting into that ANCH harness. Other than that, everything else was plug and play. So I'm going to leave some helpful links, including wiring diagrams for uh, these trucks. So it's the wiring diagram for the Base 6, the Alpine, as well as the Harman Kardon. And then I'll leave links to all the stuff that I purchased, as well as links to uh, new concept wiring, because that's where I get all my speaker wire and power cable. Other than that, sorry, boring video, a lot of talking, but I think this will help some of you guys who are considering upgrading your stereo system, as well as kind of the hows, twos, and where I ran everything. I think that was important. Um, the fuse position definitely up front was is a question that comes up quite a bit. But with that said, thank you very much for watching. Appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, I got a few more videos coming at you guys. Appreciate it. Take care.